Hi, this is Paul Garay from Inside Home Recording. We're going to talk about what you need to set up a cool recording studio in your home on the lab. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. I'm having a little cup of coffee. Why don't you pour yourself one and sit down because the next hour we're going to show you everything you want to know about technology, how to use it, how to choose it, how to abuse it. Oh, we talk about that and how to lose it when you're done. Ladies and gentlemen, Kate Abraham, hey. my wonderful, talented, friendly clipboard manager. There you go. <laughs> Episode 18. That's what it says right here. Seems like we're uh, going back in time a little bit. Episode Everything, 18. The numbers just aren't going We had done right? 500 call for help. Was it 500? 450? Something like that. 450 call for help episodes. And then they reset the counter. I said, why can't we? But no, it's a new show, new name. So we're just nowhere near right now. Are we? So episode 18. Oh, just wait. You'll look like me by the time you get 450 shows done. <laughs> Isn't that a cruel and mean thing to say? I used to look just like her. We are, <laughs> that's a cruel and mean thing to say. Paul Garay is here, as you saw. He's from the Inside Home Recording Podcast, great little podcast. And he's going to show us how he records. Not just He's actually a music producer, too. Not just a, a voice, but also a music. And Deanne LeBlanc, our Linux experts, back with a demonstration of probably the ultimate graphics tool for Linux, every bit as good as Photoshop and absolutely free. Yes, free. Did I say Linux? Mac and Windows too. So that's all coming up. But first, the calls are what we care most about. Yeah, and I also care a lot about backup callers as well. This is a backup, this caller. Is a backup caller. Came in at the last yeah, moment. What happens is if callers drop out of the show for any reason, if they're unavailable, then we call our backups. And when I book backups, they're always a bit like, oh, backup. I don't know if I'm going to get yeah. called. It's kind of like being the first runner up in Miss America. Yeah, yeah. So Miss America basically <laughs> stumbled and fallen, and now... You're there. Geez, it's Jeff. This is Jeff. Jeff yeah. is going to step right in, and he's going to wear the crown. Yeah, but like, and honestly, Jeff has been great. He's been like, he got his Skype up and running. Literally, he's had like five minutes prep. Well, I hope I have a good answer for him after all that. <laughs> but Jeff is from Spring Hill in Tennessee. Tennessee. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Thank you, Kate. Hey, Leo. How are you? Thank you for stepping into the breach. As first runner-up, your duties will be to take over should the uh, original caller fail. And apparently the original caller has failed in some uh, obscure way. But it, it's great to talk to you. Good looks, to talk to you. Looks like a nice day in Tennessee today. Yeah, it's been a good day. I, I can't believe the sun is still out. Yeah, we got sunshine in the day, and, and it's in uh, almost 70 today. Wow. I guess it's summertime now. I mean, that really is. We've got late, late evenings. I think there's nothing nicer than a, a warm summer evening that's, that's not quite dark yet, and everybody's out and about. I just love that feeling. And I bet yeah, you get that. Everybody's walking around the neighborhood. Yeah. Are you in a kind of small town? Yes, uh, yeah. Springhill is, is a small town uh, south wonderful. of Nashville. I love Tennessee. It's a beautiful, beautiful state. Well, what can I do for you, Jeff? Uh, regarding recording for a netcast that I do. I do a oh. uh, little weekly netcast, and it's really intended just for my company. It's an internal thing. Jeff, I want to and thank you for calling it a netcast. Uh, you're quite welcome. Well, <laughs> I got that from you. I'm a big fan of all of your netcasts. It's okay to call them a podcast. Everybody knows what a podcast is. I just, I'm afraid that people think you have to have an iPod, so I use the word netcast. And you know, I'm not alone. NBC and CBS now are using the netcast term, too, so maybe we've got some allies on our side. And, and of course, Jeff. So it's, for, it's an internal thing for your company? Yeah, it's, uh, it's just to, to spread information about different things going on inside of my company. That's I'm such a great idea. Across the country. That's such and, a great uh, idea. Uh, just kind of let the other offices know what's going on right. you know, amongst the other offices. Yeah, I mean, you know, you send out, you could send out memos or email or, or, but people don't read those. But if you've got a podcast, especially if it's there's a sales staff and they're in their car, what a great way to reach out to people and, and, and make it kind of fun. Well, that's cool. I'm glad you're using that technology. Well, how can I help you uh, do it? Well, my question is, uh, I've recently switched my, to a Vista system, and I was using uh, Hot Record to record my mm. Skype conversation. Right. And Hot Record does not work under Vista. Really? So I fired up, Skype crashes. 
You know, I never uh, much liked Hot Recorder anyway, to be honest with you. I never got very good results with that. Well, I've been looking for something different. I tried Pretty May, and I've been very disappointed in the quality on that. I use... Um, I use the uh, Audacity program as okay. my editor, and I can record on it, but my problem there is you only it doesn't get separate my caller from me on a different channel. Right. So. You only get half the call, really. Yeah, so it's hard to edit. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, what I do for all my netcasts, we do it all on Skype, is, of course, I spent some money, and I got an expensive mixing board, and I pipe my voice through the mixing board and record it separately and then pipe it into Skype and record their voice separately. And that, uh, you know, I mean, that's the, probably the best way to do it. But it's expensive, and if you can't get the company to spring for it. Now, I haven't tried this yet, but I have heard very good reports of it, and I'm very interested in how it works. It's called Pamela. Have you ever heard of Pamela? No. Pamela Systems, Pamela-Systems.com. And they have, uh, they've really, I think they've jumped into the breach here to solve a lot of problems for Skype users. It's called Pamela for Skype, and it's more than just a recorder. It's the personal digital assistant for Skype. Yes, the very first thing you get is call recording, but it also does call transfer video recording. It has a, I don't know what a rich mood editor is, but I'm thinking that those little mood messages that you have so you could put a little additional information in those. It even does an answering machine, video mail, it, birthday room. I mean, look at all this stuff in here. And here's the cool thing. It's free. Well, it's free for limited use. Now, you're probably going to want to pay for it because the free trial of Pamela only records 15 minutes. So if you want to record more, uh, you'll have to pay a little bit more. It's 25 bucks. Big deal for unlimited recording. There you go. And it, Pamela is neat because it integrates right into Skype. You know, with Sound Recorder, you kind of have to re run it separately and so forth. I've got Pamela running right now uh, Let's on Skype. I'm on my Skype thing. And you can see Pamela for Skype is actually running. And there's uh, all sorts of little things I can say where the recordings go. It records at MP3. Uh, and and uh, so I'm, I'm curious to see what kind of quality you get from it. But you can see you can even mix you know how the microphone and the uh, and the caller are mixed together on this thing the sound level adjustment i think this is going to be a pretty interesting program uh... It it's like this could be a great answer yeah in fact i'm going to install it on skype uh... even though i don't need the record features just because i want some of these other uh, features. I mean, so this is now kind of modified my, you know, I'm, instead of running, I can still run Skype, but now I'm running Pamela here. So it integrates very nicely in. Uh, custom recordings as well um, for your voicemail. I mean, I think this is a very slick little program. So uh, Pamela is, uh, you know, there are some others, and I'll put those in the show notes that claim to work with Vista, but all of them are kind of like Hot Recorder, kind of kludgy and, and, and kind of unimpressive. Pamela-systems.com. I have heard very good reports, or I wouldn't recommend it. And they have a very active community as well. So if you want to get help, you can see they've got a forum, a message board with a lot of people uh, talking about it. And their call recorder has, in fact, got a, its own section in here. So give it a try. And then will you let me know, Jeff, how it works for you? I'll do it. I'm going to make you my guinea pig. All right. Sounds good. I look forward to trying it out. And, and yeah. Because if it's free, it means I can try it out. For, I like that part, right? Uh, you can only record for 15 minutes, but maybe that's enough. I don't know. And it certainly gives you a taste of how well it works. Well, I like to keep my podcast short because, you know, I don't really think I'm that good yet, and people get bored quickly, but, you know, sometimes you're a, they run longer you're than You're a that. wise man. Somebody told me to keep my podcast short, but I haven't been able to do it yet. I don't know. I'm working on it. I, Sounds get, like something Dick would say. They're me. getting longer and longer. It's exactly that's what Dick <laughs> tells me. Someday this podcast will be over, maybe tomorrow. Hey, thank you so much, Jeff. I really appreciate your call. Thank you, Leo. You've been a great first runner-up. <laughs> Have a great day. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I should ask Paul Gary this because he is the king of inside home recording. That's his podcast. And uh, he's going to talk about setting up your own home recording studio in case you'd like to become a, uh, a recording artist of your very own. We're going to turn you into Prince with Paul right after this. You stay right here. Welcome back to the lab with Leo. Look at all these toys we've got here. Paul Garay is a, uh, a a musician. I heard you playing a little earlier. A, little. a music producer and the creator of the Inside Home Recording IHR podcast, which is a great podcast, InsideHomeRecording.com, with my buddy Derek K. Miller, who is a part of 
your team, yeah? Part of the team. Yeah. Derek did uh, the theme. Does he's another great musician. Awesome. Yeah. Did the theme that I use uh, for very kindly allowed me to use the theme that I use for uh, Windows Weekly, our oh, podcast. Really? Yeah. So it's a family affair here. Oh. But we, you and I, have never met. I have nothing up my sleeves. Oh, I'm sorry. That's another. That's another <laughs> show I do. Yeah. Uh, look at all the toys you brought here. Now, what is this home recording for? A professional musician, somebody who just wants to get into it. Who is this for? Everybody. It's really Anybody. for everybody. We so have, even a pro uh, would say, even John Mayer would say, "This is great." He probably owns half of this. I thing. bet you're right. Actually, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and I'm I've been playing for um, uh, keyboards. I've been playing almost uh, 35 years, uh -huh. and I'm quite comfortable on all these uh, different keyboards. Uh, obviously, I like the feel of a piano, and you can you can get these keyboards in a piano feel if that's what you it, want for a lot more money. Um, well, you know what's funny is um, M Audio they kind of broke the po the price barrier um, and introduced a weighted keyboard for under five hundred dollars. Really? Wow! And it wow. feels like a piano, but the so. sounds are. Not not being created by plucked strings, they're being created electronically, digitally. They are. And you know what's funny is that, uh, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, all the sounds were originating in the keyboards. Right. But now they're all being originated in soft synthesizers that are in your computer. The computer's doing the work. Exactly. So this yeah. is really a, a kind of a fancy joystick. It's Or it's like the keyboard to your CPU. Right. It's a, it's a yeah. controller instead exactly. of a, a musical instrument. Exactly. In fact, that's what they kind of call them is MIDI controllers, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I brought two different ones. Uh, the interesting thing about this one here is it works with USB really? and uh, oh, it can cool. be powered through USB. You can see that there's no there's power no, adapter. It's just a USB cable no yep. into a Mac or PC. Um, it's actually core compliant. You don't even need a driver. It just you know, it just it works. works automatically. It just works. Now, of course, it doesn't have 88 keys. Uh, no, what you have here is you have a transpose uh, button, so you can go up an octave or three octaves, I and see. you can actually cover more than 88 keys <laughs> if you're, you're some sort of a com compositional <laughs> freakazoid. But um, you can only play it on this keyboard. Yeah, <laughs> right. And what I really like about this one, I take this with me when I'm traveling because it's got these pads. And what are uh, those for? They're not miniature coffee warmers, although you think they are. <laughs> you can actually use them to trigger sound effects. Or you could play percussion on them. They're touch sensitive, uh, and so you could, yeah. this could be a drum kit. It could, yeah. Wow. You could do the finger, wow, you know, thing. But that's what's important to understand about these: is these make piano sounds, but they can make any sound, right? You could they can attach anything. anything to any key. Yeah, you know, people yeah. in radio use them to trigger sound effects. Yeah, that's right. I've seen people that do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, how much is this little one? This is the Axiom Twenty Five. Goes sells for around around two hundred dollars. Very you, affordable. Yeah, and you can get them in different lengths too. There's a forty nine and there's a sixty one. If you want, you know, more coverage. If you want to play with two hands right. instead of one. Right. Um, I bought an Ederall a keyboard. Same idea. Roland makes them. It's a yeah. it's a MIDI controller. Yeah. And uh, and it's the same idea too. You can choose how many keys you want. <laughs> exactly. Right. But you know what I'm really excited about is the hybrid uh, Ozonic in their line. Now this, this is also M Audio. It's an M Audio keyboard. But you know what's really cool about this is that before this thing came out. I would I would carry one of these to to program my MIDI, you know, my mm -hmm. keyboards and stuff. And I would carry an audio interface like this one here. You need both uh, to plug my microphones in, so you could sing. So I could sing or play guitar. Right. Well, the cool thing about the Ozonic is it's a hybrid. It's it's a MIDI keyboard. It's FireWire instead of USB, okay. and we know the transfer rate for audio is a lot quicker. Right. So they decided to put a mic preamp in it, allow you to plug your guitar into it. You're um, kidding. I've so this could a, be, this could, your whole band could record through this yeah, thing. Totally. And it's not a mixer, though. It's, uh, well, you know, funny enough, it, it, you can call you it can a even mix surface <laughs> because it has some sliders here that you could, you could dedicate to, oh, to a mixer. Funny? Wow. Um, this is pretty fancy. It's great. And it's, it's even got a joystick. It's Whoa. got a joystick. What does that do? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Does that go around the room? Well, we won't go there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that for quadraphonic? <laughs> yeah, you can assign that to an XY controller or surround controller. So really, all of these are soft controllers in the sense they could do anything. You, you tell a computer what that means. Exactly. In effect. Okay. It, exactly. And it's got a lot of knobs and buttons. Yeah. Sometimes. Wow. And and you know I can be in my hotel room and I can be doing a podcast with a beautiful condenser studio condenser mic like I have here mm -hmm. with phantom power plugged right into the back. Uh, I could be recording uh, some vocals, some wow, acoustic that's guitars. Really neat. I can plug in my uh, my my electric guitar and then go into any Mac or PC uh, DAW like uh, digital audio workstation uh, software like how Pro much, Tools. How much? How much does this cost? It's about six hundred dollars. So it's a little. 
little pricey, but boy, but if you add up the price uh, of a you know a keyboard and, and an keyboard. interface, yeah. and then you got to carry all this stuff. Now you said it works with any DAW compliant uh, program. What program do you like to use when you're composing or working with this kind of stuff? Well, I use a whole bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. um, but I would have to say for somebody getting into uh, recording at home that just wants to record music, you know, some piano and some drums and make some beats. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Propellerhead's Reason software. Oh, isn't that cool software? Yeah. You know what, though? I, I thought my daughter was really into this stuff, right? So, uh, And Reason had a, a trial version. I downloaded it. She played with it. She liked it. Reason looks like real stuff, and she really enjoyed it. So I went out, and I bought her the Edderall keyboard and the full Reason. I spent a lot of money. And then Apple comes out with GarageBand, and she likes it better. Because well, it's easier. It is, yeah. yeah. And, of course, GarageBand has the op option of uh, recording real audio into the program, unlike, you know, Reason doesn't allow you to right. do that. So it's a loop so, manager. So a lot of people who have Macs will have a program that's a really a pretty good place to start. Can you interface oh, sure. this stuff into GarageBand as well? You can, yeah. yeah it works Show us Reason, right out of the box. Reason's cool. Reason, Reason, Reason is, is so cool. Is a wonderful tool for creating beats. I'm going to have to learn this. Now that I have the keyboard in Reason, it's going to be me. Exactly. Well, if you see, you can see the interface here. It models like a rack like you would have in your studio with right. different devices and you've you know you've got your mixer here and and down below that we've got some effects and we've got some synthesizers here's a, a subtractor synthesizer uh, which is modeling an old-school analog synthesizer and then if I flip this up here I can choose any one of these tracks and uh, I can go in and play the different uh, the different sounds. Did I screw it up? Did I did I unplug it or anything? Is oh no, that's fine. All right, because um, we're not hearing anything. But, oh, uh, you know why we don't have the audio plugged in? Should I plug the audio into this? Oh well, we won't worry about it. I'll hum. You know, I'll, I'll show you something uh, that's even we've better. Got oh, you know why we've got to plug into this? That's ah, right. yeah. We can hit the tab key and we can flip this around. Oh, I love those wires bouncing. <laughs> Isn't that great? Let's do that again. Let's do, that's fun. That's oh, yeah. The, that's actually why that's I cool. spent $600 every reason that thing. <laughs> but, you know, I used to teach synthesis and uh, we used to actually teach this with was, this program. Because, really? you, you, you know, instead of climbing around yeah. with a flashlight right. in your mouth and right. trying to hook things up, you can actually create a connection just by, you know, using this menu or you can click and drag a cable look at that. and plug it into anything Just you want. Just patch it, or patch it yeah, through. Yeah, patch it through. But I have to there. say, you might need a degree in synthesis to understand this program, right? I mean, it's pretty tough. Well, you know, it's, it's funny you say that because a lot of entry-level users right out of the box can start making beats. Really? I had my neighbor making beats and, you know, he's like well, a Abby molecular biology instructor. Yeah, so and, there you go. You know, he's not into music. Yeah. But if you really want to go to those sub-nuclear levels, all these programs will pretty much let you do that. You can get in and tweak and... Uh, so they've got a simple-to-use interface, but they're very deep in the long run. That's kind of, exactly. that's exactly what you're looking yeah. for. Yeah, so whatever your level is of expertise. Can but, you play uh, a little music for us? Just show us how you would use Reason in this keyboard to, to make sure. some, some fat jams. Sure. Well, let's open up a new I'm song here. See, I'm one of the kids now, yeah. Okay, so here right. we have an empty rack. So you said this doesn't record, though. Well, it records MIDI. It records what I'm playing on oh, a so USB or okay. a Firewire MIDI keyboard. Okay. Um, and I go but in... But not a real instrument. I get what you're saying. Not a real instrument. Not a flute or a right. guitar right. or a sitar or anything but like that. But you could sound like any of those. You sure could, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I'm going to go in and just create a little mixing board. You can see I've got a little mixing board. And what I really like is that when I create a device, it'll automatically patch it in. So I can create like a sampler, which allows me to play real sounds and just load up a sound of maybe a grand piano. This is such a deep program. It's amazing. These guys are from Sweden. Yes? Yeah, they're from Sweden. I think we've hooked it up to... Where's the sound coming out of? Well, let's just find out here. <laughs> I don't know where the sound... Coming out of this? Let's I, see. I shouldn't have fiddled with the knobs. That's all right. I thought it was coming out of that. Sean, where did we hook the sound up to? Sean's coming out. Here comes Sean. Which one is... I don't think we had sound patched into that one. Yeah, That's so why we haven't patched into the, the audio in the other one. We had it working. It was on. Yeah. It was working. Oh, well. Nah. Work. You know what? I'll tell you what. We're going to take a break, but at the end of the show, would you play some funky fat sure. jams for we'll us? We'll do a little bit of that. All sure. right. <laughs> Paul Garay is a music producer, musician, obviously, uh, and creator of the Inside Home Recording Podcast. You cover all of this stuff in IHR. We do, you? yeah. A really great podcast. Highly recommended at InsideHomeRecording.com. Details on all this stuff and what you can do with it on our website, LabWithLeo.com. Stay here. More of your calls coming up. But first, let's take a close-up look at not that, but this. What the heck is it? 
What the tech is it, maybe I should say. It's something commonly found around the lab. Can you decipher the clue? Figure it out, and we'll come back. We'll zoom out and find out as the lab continues. Welcome back to the lab. We zoomed in, and this technological object, what the tech is it? I don't know. Let's zoom out and find out. Oh, oh, it's Logitech Premium USB Headsets 350. It's uh, the kind of headset that you'd find on uh, any Skype phone or, uh, or a PC that you wanted to record. Hey, there's Paul Garay, the, the magical musical tones of Paul Garay. Welcome to the beautiful limelight room and the top of the lab building in beautiful downtown Vancouver where Paul Garay and his magical sounds. Isn't that beautiful? What's amazing is you can make any sound you want out of that thing. Yeah. So you much. could have it be a bass fiddle, a cello, you could have it be a flute, you could have it be me going, ah! Anything you want. You could do that. Sure, if you wanted <laughs> you to. You might not want to, but you could. <laughs> Paul, thank you so much. I really Paul. appreciate it. Glad we were finally able to get that all routed through and connected. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, another caller had a question for Leo. Kate, who would that it's be? It's like a lounge bar in here. It is. <laughs> <laughs> like a big, really I hear the tinkling snow. of ice, actually. It's quite amazing. Yeah, we have Daniel on the line. He is from Peterborough in Ontario. Hey, Daniel. How are you today? Hi. I'm very well. Welcome to the lab. And what can I do to help you with your tech woe? Um, recently, I got a chance to put in some serious time on a Mac, finally. And I like it, but I don't exactly love it. And so I was just wondering, <laughs> if I go ahead and buy one, will I be able to put Ubuntu on it without any problem? Oh, that's an interesting question. Sure. I mean, I'm not sure I'd recommend buying a Mac just to run Ubuntu. So Ubuntu is a form of Linux, by the way. Yeah. Um, but if you said, oh, well, I, what I would like is I would like to run OS X and I would like to run Linux. And by the way, you can also run Windows as we are on this one. Uh, a Mac is a good choice. Really, nowadays, when you're buying a Mac, you're buying the same, basically the same hardware you buy when you buy a PC. You're paying a little bit extra because you're getting OS X on it, and it's the only kind of hardware that can run OS X. So when you said you liked a little bit, not a lot, you still want to run some Mac? Yeah, it's just if I get sick of it because I haven't put a lot of time into it, I don't want to have to sell it to someone else for right. half the price, so I yeah. want something to fall back on. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I've put uh, Ubuntu Linux on um, uh, many Macs. It runs quite well. Um, one way to tell is to make a live CD of Ubuntu and, uh, and, and bring it over to the Apple Store somewhere and boot into the Mac and make sure it works. There are a few things that will not work. The webcam might be one of them, although if you, if you check out the Ubuntu Linux uh, website, you'll see that, in fact, uh, there is a pretty extensive thread. Let me, let me pull the link up for you on, uh, on getting the UbuntuForums.org site, on getting the uh, Mac, uh, built-in Mac site to work with Ubuntu. So I, I think if you got the right thread, are you a Linux pro? Um, mediocre, maybe okay. mediocre plus plus. Is it, yeah, all right. Well, you'd probably be able to do this. I mean, it's a step-by-step, -step, but you see you do have to install a number of modules. You have to download some particular uh, code. But it is possible to get the eyesight working. It just doesn't come working out of the box. But that's, I think, pretty much the only thing that doesn't work. Everything else will work just fine. And the nice thing is, you know, you could... Uh, you could make a dual boot if you wanted. You could get rid of OS X if you wanted. Or you could use Parallels, as I am here, to run. I've got Vista running. I've got XP running. I can even run uh, Ubuntu without Linux, without getting rid of the Mac. So I've got you know, kind of the best of all worlds. Um, what about the wireless? Pardon because me? Because I know um, NDIS wrapper for installing Windows drivers works fine, but for... Um I'm told, now I know you can use Endis Wrapper, uh, this is, and Marcel Gagné talked about this a lot uh, on the, the old Call for Help show, Endis Wrapper allows you to use Windows drivers on Linux, and you can use Endis Wrapper to get uh, the Wi-Fi card in the Mac working on Ubuntu, but I am told that you don't need to, that there's actually a fairly simple way to do that, there's a little driver to download, and I would bet you in the newest Ubuntu, Feisty Fawn, there's probably yeah. even better support for that. So I know this was this was in the early version six. So uh, I'm pretty sure that you won't have any trouble with seven, uh, getting uh, getting everything working as I said, including the webcam with a little bit of work. Again, I, I have to be honest with you. If you if if you're not crazy about the Mac, I'm not sure I'd run out and get a Mac. Um, 
I don't, but I, I also have to think that as you get used to it, you might find that you like it more and more. One of the reasons I don't use Linux as much on the Mac as, as you might think is because the Mac is running Unix. Uh, under the hood, it's running a, a, a real BSD. That's what Darwin is. Uh, yeah. That's the Berkeley system distribution of Linux, which is actually a true Linux as opposed to Lin a true Unix as opposed to Linux, which is kind of a emulated Linux, a Unix. So uh, if you run the terminal application, um, yeah, I have actually at work. That's, I kind of feel more familiar in terminal than I do in the interface. Yeah, I mean, if you like, uh, if you're a, a Unix fan, this is real Unix. You know, I'm I'm running the Bash shell here, but you can run any shell, Z shell. Uh, TCSH, whatever shell you'd like. Um, you, you don't have all of the traditional Unix commands, but you can install almost all of them using either uh, uh, Fink, which is a, a really great way to put uh, Unix programs, Linux-style programs on your Mac, or the Darwin ports, which is another way to do it. Um, I think what you're seeing is there are a lot of Unix geeks and hardcore geeks, programmers, hackers, who use Macs because you've got Unix there, as well as the Mac interface. And uh, frankly, I don't feel any need to put Linux on my Mac because I've already, you know, if, if you really want to stay in the shell, you can stay in the shell all day. You've got Python, you've got Perl, you've got Ruby pre-installed. In fact, I'm told uh, when Leopard comes out, you'll have Ruby on Rails pre-installed. Oh, you have, wow. Yeah. You have SQL, MySQL, you've got uh, SQL Lite. Um, you, you really can do anything that you could do on Ubuntu. To, um, with the exception of, uh, well, you can even run X Windows. I shouldn't even say that. You can run X Window and you can run an X Window Presentation Manager. So, uh, you know, in a way, uh, again, if, if you're just going to run Linux, get a cheap PC. You know, yeah. don't waste your money. But if you think you want to dabble in Mac, I would say go ahead, and you may find that you have less need to run Ubuntu than you think. I, I stay in the shell a lot. I love the shell. I'm a Unix freak. Mm -hmm. And this is Unix, baby. It really is. Don't tell, don't tell grandma that because it's also a Mac and it's very easy to use and friendly and, you know, it's got big icons and buttons oh, and stuff yeah. like that too. So we get the best of both worlds. We get GarageBand and we get Bash Shell. Okay, Daniel? All right. Enjoy. And, yeah, uh, yeah and the answer to your basic question is absolutely. You can run Ubuntu on it just fine. Okay. Just fine. Hey, hey, thanks for the call. I really appreciate it. Coming up, more of your calls. Also, DM, speaking of Linux, DM LeBlanc, our Linux expert, is going to show us the ultimate photo editing software. Every bit as good as the $800 Photoshop, but it's free. And we've got Ryan Yule's Jewels and a whole lot more. Stay right here. Oh, don't go away because I do want you to take the quiz question. Who invented PHP? The PHP programming language. Was it the PHP Foundation, the Zend Technology folks, the World Wide Web Consortium, or Rasmus Lerdorf uh, from Greenland? Or is it Rasmus Greenland from Lerdorf? I can never remember. Go to the website, think about it, ponder, cogitate, contemplate. When we come back a little later on, we'll tell you the answer. Oh, it's... Is that Sonic? Sonic the, the Hedgehog riding on our cameras? Welcome back to the lab. I'm Leo Laporte. I hope you're enjoying the show so far. It's going to get even better in just a bit because we've got a great new caller on. We have. Way. We actually got a caller from Australia. This is Wayne. He's from Perth. And from he's, Perth. He's got up very early this morning for us. Oh, Wayne, I can't thank you enough. I really appreciate it. Not a problem. Long time viewer. First time caller. How are you, Leo? Oh, we're so glad to get you on the show. Thank you so much for, for to be on the show. rising so early. Uh, I hope uh, that you had to get up this early anyway, and it wasn't just on our account. Uh, not a problem. Plenty of good stuff on, on cable television to watch at this hour of the morning. <laughs> well, it's us and Oprah. That's pretty much the choice for me. So what? Uh, <laughs> so, so, do you have Oprah in, uh, in Australia? Unfortunately, yes, on TV <laughs> and on pay TV. I wonder how it plays in Australia, because it seems like such an, an American show. Uh, but I guess it must be, is it popular? Um, it is with the stay-at-home mums and sure. the 40-on age group, yes. Yeah, I think that's probably the so same. It's pretty much the same demographic the same as here. in America. But they love it. My wife gets over the Oprah magazine and everything. She loves Oprah. She just loves Oprah. I say, honey, uh, your husband, me, I'm on TV too. She says, who are you again? Anyway, what can I do for you, Wayne? How can I help you with your computer problem? We'll worry, we'll worry about the ladies another time. Yes, uh, just a very simple one this time around. Okay. Um, my wife and I use eBay quite a bit to buy and sell things. And we downloaded the eBay toolbar and went straight to Internet Explorer, but yeah. we use Firefox. 
There isn't now. I don't know if the functionality is as good, but there is an eBay toolbar for Firefox. So uh, okay. you'll have to tell me what your toolbar does. It comes from eBay, so it would be. It's a question of, I guess, whether e how much eBay has implemented the functionality that's in the Internet Explorer toolbar. It is possible. Uh, to do more in Internet Explorer, in fact, one of the reasons that I recommend not to use Internet Explorer is because you can do more. It can be more dangerous because programs, uh, you know, Internet sites are allowed to, to interact with your computer in ways that I think are un unhealthy and unsafe. But, uh, you know, so here let me show you how you extend uh, or, or find any extension uh, for Firefox. One of the things that makes Firefox so great is the add-ons. So you go to Tools, Add-ons. Now, they call it add-ons now because th there are two kinds of add-ons, and I'm sure there will be some more in, in uh, time extensions, which is what we're talking about, and themes. Uh, and you can theme it and that may, you know, make it look different. But So we've got only two extensions ex added on here right now. And I have to say that that is something to keep in mind. Too many extensions make Firefox very slow and sometimes unreliable. I'm clicking this button here that says Get Extensions in the lower right-hand corner. And this is going to search the official Mozilla site for extensions. So let's just type in eBay and, and see what they have. And there are some non-eBay extensions here. eBay Buddy, eBay Captcha Populated, that's probably not what you want. Uh, eBay Blog This, eBay and I think these are none of these are really going to be what you want, although some of them you may find use, useful. You sell a lot of stuff on eBay or are you an eBay buyer? Um, we're starting to sell a lot more now. Than yeah, that. and I tell you, there are a lot of great software tools. There are 21 extensions for eBay on Mozilla, but I know what you want. You want the eBay official eBay toolbar. And if you do a Google for eBay and Firefox, you'll find it very. I just type Firefox. That's not what we're. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to get, but that's not what we're looking for. The very first entry is Firefox.codebase.ebay.com, and this comes from eBay. So this is, I suspect. Very very similar to the eBay toolbar for Internet Explorer. You install it, you will have to, uh, uh, when, when you install it, you probably will have to get permission, you know, give Firefox permission to install it and so forth and so on. But this, this I suspect, will do much the same thing. But uh, you might want to check some of those other extensions to see if they add some functionality. Firefox is, you know, can be really extended limitlessly, but, uh, yeah. you know, it's just a question of what eBay's decided to implement. So. Firefox.codebase.ebay.com. No okay. problem. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for your help, Wayne. I thank you very much for uh, watching the show and for getting up early. Not a worry. I'll continue to do so. What do you sell on eBay? Uh, my wife makes a lot of art and craft gear, and she's starting to clean that. And we're also emptying out our shed. Is <laughs> someday I'll have the energy to do that to because I got a, a garage that's just full of stuff. You know, there's a really great yeah, site. I don't think I don't know if it works in. Uh, in um, Australia or not, but it's Etsy. It's a great place. It's kind of like eBay for crafts, ETSY.com. I'm not sure if they sell into Australia or, or buy from Australia, but I believe it's worldwide, and boy, is this a neat site. You might want to uh, show, show it to your wife, ETSY.com. Okay? We'll do that. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks for the call. I appreciate it, Wayne. As they say in Canada, good day, mate. We'll be right. I, do they, they say that in Canada? Or is it? Is it You're they asking say it me? Brighton. I don't know. I'm looking at the wrong person, aren't I? We'll be right back in just a little bit. We're going to show you at the ultimate free photo editing software and more of your calls, too, as the lab continues. Stay here. Welcome back to the lab. We got Ryan Yule with one of Yule's jewels coming up, a free file today. But first, let's get another call on the air. Our last call is uh, Don. I nearly forgot his name. <laughs> <laughs> and he's from Hemet in California. Hemet? I know where Hemet is. Hello, Don. How are you today? Don. I think he forgot his name, too, actually. Don, are you there? Did we lose him? He was having some trouble with his Media Center edition. So let's see if we can get him back on. because. Yeah, we're going to call him back. Uh, we, don't, we don't give up. You may say, I, oh, I'm too shy to talk. We're going to call you until you get on the show. Uh, I am not an expert with Windows Media Center Edition, but we're going to call on our good friend Sean Carruthers to help us with this. As I remember from reading his email, the problem was he'd watch TV for a while, like 15 minutes, and then it would just stop working. 
Um, it's a puzzle. That's kind of a puzzle. I mean, when, yeah. whenever a computer uh, works for a little while and then fails, usually right. to me that sounds like heat, right? It does sound like heat. Um, yeah, because if, if it's going right off the bat, it's not a driver. Well, we know the driver works. The driver well, works. Well, there's two possibilities. It could, be, uh, it could be what we call a memory leak, which is right. programs that after a while eat more and more memory until they crash. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's related to hardware, then, then you say it's heat. So if it's, say, if the, so it could really be two things. It could be your, your video card, your video capture card, or the video card that's doing the playback is overheating and crashing. Or it could be the driver has a memory leak, which means it's consuming more more and more memory, and after a certain amount of time, it consumes so much memory that it can't run anymore, and it c collapses in on itself. Right. Now, if I remember, it was happening fairly quickly. It wasn't like over the course of two hours. No, it was like 15 back. minutes, as I think he said. Yeah, or even a, a couple of minutes. Was it a couple anyway. of minutes? Yeah. Well, we're so getting him on the line. As soon as we... Is he there? Okay, we've All got right. Don now. We can ask him uh, specifically. Hey, Don, are you there? <laughs> Did you hang up on him again? Yeah. He's there. I see him blinking. I know he's there. Well... I'm not sure. I guess we can't get them. So that's fine. I'm not too worried about it because that was the question. Those are really the basic answers that we'd give him even if he asked the specifics. If it's two minutes, it's probably not heat, right? That's pretty it's, quick. Yeah, it's pretty quick. So yeah. it may be a failure of the software itself. That's first thing first thing I would do is download new drivers. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and as we've said before, you know, you have to find out who the video card is. Mm -hmm. Look for the manufacturer. You can often get it from the manufacturer. If it's an NVIDIA card, you may also want to get it from NVIDIA directly. Right. Try different drivers. Uh, he was using XP's Media Center Edition. So you want to make sure you get the right drivers for your operating system. Yeah, and the one thing I would check on that to see if it was a, a product that was put together by a reseller. Uh, yeah. it, it may not be the kind of card that is perfectly compatible with that. So there may be enough compatibility to work for a little right. bit. But That's actually a really good point. For a long time, Microsoft said, this is a Windows Media Center edition, and only these people can make them. Right. And, and every piece of hardware was rated, specced out for it. Uh, and, and as a result, you know, it, it seemed to work pretty well, you know, because it was HP, it was the big name companies that were making it. Then at some point, they decided, no, we're going to make this the default kind of Windows. We're going to have everybody use this. We'll even sell anybody who wants a copy of the operating system. They didn't used to do that. You actually, you actually had to be a, a real big computer manufacturer to, and, and certified to make them. And that's right. Now you're going, to, you're going to have a wide variety of hardware, and a lot of it doesn't work very well. Ironically, with Vista, every, every copy of, of, of Vista, at least from the home premium on up, comes with Media Center. So it's, it's an even worse situation. You could you know, buy Vista off the shelf and put it with hardware that, that, that really doesn't work very well. I think that's too bad, in a way. Mm -hmm. yeah, and the, the, the thing about it is if you have a Media Center edition that works beforehand and you swap a component out, too, if well, it's theoretically compatible, right. then you could have the problem as well. Well, I, you know, I, even if Don had been here to listen to this conversation, I think that's, we would have said exactly the same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a video cassette for him, and we'll send it to him, and he can watch it at home on his VCR, since Media Center is not working. Thank you, Don, for your question of the day. Now it's time for Ryan Yule yes. and Yule's Jewels. I hope you have a good one, because you know we've got like the ultimate free Ooh. graphics package coming up. Uh, this is better be good if it's going to compete with that. It's well, it does what it's supposed to do well. So it I'll ain't give, the gimp. It ain't the gimp. <laughs> what it is, what not. is it? It's called Psymeter 2.0, and it's essentially very small program, tiny. System information? Is that what Psy stands for? I'm not sure. Is it SI? It is SI. I'm, I'm thinking that. It's probably I'm thinking system that's information. What it is. I'm thinking. You got, you got I'm the thinking mind. thinking that's what you it is. The mind. <laughs> um, it's a small program, but the thing I like about small programs is if they do what they're supposed to do well, I'm happy. So up here, you can see we got our little CPU meter. It's nothing's much oh, going is, on right now. So this is a little thing you could put like on the side of the Screen. Yeah, and, and you can just kind of monitor I like things. this kind of stuff. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So let's let's just kick it up a notch. You don't here. have to have that big window open. That's no. just the settings. This, these are just I want to show the settings that yeah. you can do things like you can make the meter transparent. So if it's like a little annoying, I you think can that's make a it too transparent. Yeah, that's a little <laughs> too just, transparent. It disappeared. There we go. And you can like change things like if you just want to see the CPU, you can right. change the different meters, and you can you can do it. There's there are some oh, options here. I like here. this. This is kind of like a program I use in the Mac called Menu Meters. It goes in the menu, but it's the same thing. You, yeah. If you, especially nowadays with the Core Two, and you want to see if both processors are being used. Yeah. Like that. So we'll just what we'll do is we'll quickly just here let's also just let's just load everything up here and and watch We're the, look, at that. look at Max that. it out look at that hundred percent baby look at that. you look maxed out that look. CPU oh. you killed it you killed We're it We're gonna blow up We so. can't see it because your your picture is overlapping Oh well, here it is I can left. I can do that There you go There we go Isn't that fun to yeah. get a graph like that So you just get little graphs and I mean it, it's not a a big 
program. It doesn't have a lot of features, but like I said, what it does, it does well. It's simple. It's easy. It makes sense. Boy, as soon as whatever that was popped up, is that we? Is that uh, QuickTime? Uh, it's quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the QuickTime. Is, Holy cow! Uh, it's, it, it eats it up pretty. That's good. a resource hawk. Si Psi meter two point oh. It's, it's been around for a while. It actually, cool. yeah, yeah, it's an oldie but a goodie, as they and say. Free. It's absolutely free. Kind of like me. Oh. An oldie but a goodie. Okay, I'm not free go. though. I'm oh. very costly. Well, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Ryan Yule is the creator, the master of Yule's Jewels. You'll find them all online at labwithleo.com. I knew that. And uh, there's lots of them now. We've got, we've got dozens of them. We're getting up there. Check it out. We'll be back in just a bit with Deanne LeBlanc and the ultimate free graphics program. I've been teasing you with all show. Now, let's give you a chance, one more chance to take our quiz question of the day. Here's our quick quiz question. Who invented PHP? I'll give you a hint. It's at the time, it stood for personal homepage. Was it the PHP Foundation, Zend Technology, the World Wide Web Consortium, Erasmus Lerdorf from Greenland? Well, that's a made-up name if I ever heard one. Get to the website, think about it, cogitate, contemplate, and when we continue, we'll give you the answer as the lab rolls on. Welcome back to the lab. Before the break, we asked you who invented PHP, which is... Probably, at least it's in the top one or two programming languages on the web. And it was, in fact, Rasmus Lerdorf from Greenland. And he's actually a great guy. Uh, he works now, I think he works at Yahoo now. They use a lot of PHP at Yahoo. And yeah, it was originally the personal homepage language. Although they're so embarrassed by that, I think they've renamed it to... Uh, the PHP language. <laughs> it doesn't stand for that anymore. Deanne LeBlanc is here. She's a Linux expert, our Linux guru. Hi, Deanne. Hello. And you're bringing us what is probably the most powerful, uh, most used program, not just on Linux now, but it's on Mac and Windows right. as well. In fact, in many ways, this spurred development of other parts of Linux because the, the GIMP uh, toolkit that was developed for this uh, program is now used uh, for uh, GNOME and other parts of Linux. Yeah, the GTK. Yeah, GTK, toolkit. yeah. So what is the GIMP? The GIMP is the GNU Image Manipulation Program. Okay, sounds like an insult, but it's actually an acronym. <laughs> it's actually, yes. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's not referring to, to, uh, to injured people. Right. Um, but the GIMP is used for um, photo manipulation, um, image manipulation. It's like Photoshop. Is it as powerful as Photoshop? The GIMP can do almost, for the average user, the GIMP can do everything that Photoshop can Layers, do. Layers. Well, yeah, in fact, levels. I have some examples to show. Yeah, show us some. It is a little harder to use because the interface is so very different. Although you can they're get GIMP shop, GIMP shop, yeah, which will completely rewrite the interface. It makes it look like Photoshop. a lot like Photoshop, yeah. So, and that's free also. Yes. Um, so what I did is I've got this picture of this owl that got into our house. <laughs> oh, isn't that cute? He's, he's, he's adorable. You would never know. It's one of nature's most voracious raptors just to look at it. Yeah, he's, he's, co he's covered in soot because he got in through a, a wood stove pipe. Oh my goodness! <laughs> he's probably looking for you know human flesh. He was probably not happy with our dogs. <laughs> yeah, he looks pretty mad. I'm mad. I may be tiny, but I'm powerful. But uh, he's even more mad now that oh, I've done this to him. Oh, he's going to kill you. <laughs> That's embarrassing. But That's what fun. I did Show us how you did that. Yeah. Is I used layers for one thing. Um, he's in the background layer. Oh, I you see. Get rid of him. Oh, cool. Um, I used, I made a cape, the, the cape in pieces for him, and I applied um, a filter to it. So I could actually undo the mosaic oh, neat. and go back. So that's all and, that and was. And the truth is, anybody who's used Photoshop or seen our segments of Photoshop will recognize a lot of these things. Right. It's very similar, All really. the same terminology, for yeah, the most part. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I use layers for all the pieces, so I can get rid of the, any of the layers that I want. Uh -huh. That makes things a lot easier to edit. <laughs> What did you do with the owl? Did you bring uh, we, him to animal rescue? Or? No, we actually, he was pr he looked perfectly fine. He, we had, there's these splat marks, these city splat marks on the walls. <laughs> you can tell where he came out of the pipe. <laughs> and uh, so we, we saw him flying around, so we just finally managed Let to hurt him, him to a door. Because yeah. their, their instinct is to hold still when right. they're scared, so you had to kind of hurt him. I love him. owls so much. Yeah, he was yeah. so adorable. Yeah. So... Um, Layers, you've got uh, curves. Can you do photo uh, uh, retouching, things like yeah, red oh, eye? Definitely. Oh, yeah. um, the, main, the two main areas where GIMP lacks is if you're doing um, print, there's not the color correction yet. 
Okay. They're working on getting the CM press stuff. Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. working on CMYK color mm -hmm. co correction. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. an open source project working on that. Oh, that's neat. Um, so that will come to the game. But that makes sense. I mean, if you're a professional pre press, you're gonna you can afford it by Photoshop. You're not gonna be <laughs> right. using the game. And for heavy, heavy uh, image manipulation, heavy, heavy photo manipulation, really detailed okay. stuff. Now there is actually a version of GIMP that's used, say, to do, do the effects for Shrek. And, really? Well, yeah, I think it was Shrek. It was one of the. They use open source. Isn't that great? I yeah, love Linux, that. Linux was used for Titanic and a whole bunch of different. Yeah. But um, but yeah, there's a version. Um, I can't remember the name, but it's in the show notes. Well, I know Lucas is very much into open source software. They they really like to use open source software whenever yep, they can. And I've got this this spider image, so it's a um, photo that I took in Japan when Let's I went to see. Tokyo, yeah. and uh, it's up, it should I'll be up, up on the up there. There it is. And uh, so her name is Maman. And uh, I mean, just well, that's a big spider. Yeah, you know, see, I'm huge. kind of afraid of spiders. I don't know if I really would like Japan. <laughs> Are the spiders that big there? No, fortunately not. Oh, okay. But uh, she was huge, and uh, it was like a very a, cold a, night. Is that like uh, a statue? Yes, yes. Oh, yes wow. I was standing underneath it. Oh, that's and, cool. Uh, one, that's one a great guy, picture. Yeah, one one guy laid down on the ground right underneath one of her little pointy toes <laughs> and acted like he was speared. It was pretty wow. funny. Wow. And, I mean, and now I'm seeing the toolbar stuff. over on the left. That it, that's one of the things that confuses people because it does look a little different. From the Photoshop toolbar, but you see all the same tools there. Yes. They're and just you, not yep. in a line, they're in a box. Big deal. And you can separate them out, you can open them in different boxes. Does it run just as well on Windows and, and Macintosh as it does on Linux? Yes, in fact, um, I've some people have told me it actually runs a little nicer on Windows. I really? don't know, I don't use Windows. so But um, yeah, it runs, uh, it should run equally well, especially Windows, or Mac and Linux are so similar because it, it's, it's Unix. It's one of the longest running uh, uh, open source programs, and it's getting better all the time. All the time. And yeah. it's Absolutely free. Oh yeah, so is Amarok and everything else. Which we else. showed you the other the other day. Of course, everything you show us is free and open source because that's just how Deanne is. Deanne okay. LeBlanc is online at DeanneLeBlanc.com. Yes. That's where your blog is, and joins us to talk about free and open source stuff. Yes. And I thank you so much for uh, stopping by. Thank you. A final word as we wrap this show up. Right after this, you stay right here. Did you know that, by the way, that the owl is a fearsome raptor? Um, I also didn't know that you were very scared of spiders, <laughs> which not. I am going to retain. I am not scared <laughs> of spiders. I am not. I've actually had a tarantula crawling on my hand. I trembled good. a little. I'm not good with them. You're not? No Oh, way. well, see, I'm going to keep that. No, I no, wouldn't do that I, to you. Honestly, I, no. Can't deal with them. <laughs> but you like owls? Never been close to one. See, most people think that the spider is scarier than the owl. In fact, the spider is far less scarier than the owl. If the owl were as big as you, it'd eat, eat you like that. Especially if it's flesh hunting, owls, like the one in Deanne's house. Owls will eat their weight in, you know, every five minutes, and, they, and they're and they voracious raptors. But because they're cute little fuzzy things, people think that they're not. So just watch out. <laughs> I don't remember. What's your favorite bird? Favorite bird? Probably a robin, because it reminds me of Christmas. Robins remind you of Christmas? Yeah, because in England, on all the Christmas cards. It's different cards. in England. It's different. Because <laughs> here so in the States, uh, here in the States, here in wherever I am today, where am I? In Canada, a robin means spring. Am I wrong, Canadians? It doesn't it mean spring? The red, red robin comes anyway. If you want to be on the show, forget it. We won't talk about birds anymore. We'll talk about tech. Go to the website, labwithleo.com, fill out the form, and we will see you right here next time. Have a great day. Take care. The red, red robin comes bob, bob, bobbing along. Really? Robin's for Christmas? Yeah, I'm looking for Really? Yeah.